Our second story, Dr. Judy, is two teen girls are making a TikTok video along the shoreline in Seattle, and they discover this suitcase on the rocks while they're videotaping everything. And the suitcase has human remains in it. It's like a horror movie being videotaped in real time. Anna, this is so disturbing because people sign into TikTok to relax, to have fun, to watch dance videos. They're not expecting to sign into TikTok, making a video to try to entertain their friends and showcasing dead bodies instead. And what about the viewers of this video? I don't think anybody is expecting to be traumatized when they're signing into TikTok. Oh, not these two young girls. Absolutely not. So this is what the teens say. They were recording their video when they spotted the suitcase. They start to move a little closer and then they could smell that it was foul. But then again, they probably as kids were thinking, I don't know, dead fish. You know what I mean? You expect foul smells along the shoreline in a big city like Seattle. But as they got closer, they're like, this is this is weird. So when they unzip it, they discover these. And you can see in the pictures when they open up the suitcase, there's like the really thick, thick industrial, like black plastic garbage bags. And that's what's in the suitcase. They thank goodness these young women had the wherewithal to call 911 and and tell them, you know, we just found something. This is not what we're expecting. And you can even see that this is playing out. You could see them calling 911 on the on the video that they made. So police get there and they confirm that these are human remains and they are then taken to the medical examiners for um identification. At this point they have no idea what they have on their hands. And here's what's interesting. The uh, TikTokers, I'll call them, they found one suitcase right there on the rocks, but then police found a second suitcase floating in the water and they fished that out. Two people were killed and stuffed in these suitcases. So um, finally, just recently, the bodies have been identified. Seattle police say that Jessica Lewis, a 36-year-old mother of four from Federal Way, and her longtime boyfriend, Austin Wenner, 27 years old, they are the ones who were killed, and this is how they were killed. They were shot. Here's what's interesting. Jessica Lewis was shot several times, according to police, and Austin was shot one time. Mm. Now, this is what's also interesting, Dr. Judy. Police believe that Jessica and Austin were killed on June 16th. How is it possible that the cops know when they were shot? I have a feeling... The police know a lot more than they are revealing to the public, because that's a very specific thing to know when you, for the last few days, had a body decomposing in the water in a suitcase, right? Right. It makes sense. I mean, I don't think that uh, postmortem forensic analysis can actually pinpoint the, the date of death. And I also think that it's curious that Again, you know, given the fact that the police have released this bit of information, but no other context around it, all we have is theories. You know, why were these people hunted and killed? Uh, Did they get tangled up in something bad or were they just horrible victims of something that was almost random, perhaps even a robbery gone bad? I mean, we don't have any context for why these individuals who don't have criminal records all of a sudden found themselves dead and really treated. My question was, well, when two people go missing, they're generally reported to the police and there's been absolutely not a word about whether they had been missing and if they had for how long, if they had been reported. Now, as I was digging through social media, there have been some reports on social media posts that the couple may have been homeless. And if that is true, if they were indeed homeless, that could explain why if they were missing for a little while that no one may have known that, that their family may not have known that. So we don't know if that's true, but that certainly does make sense in this case. So I want to get back to the TikTok video because then I want to talk to you about the trauma of all of this. I mean, yeah, we can say it's, you know, the TikTok video and, 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 you know, make references to horror movies, but this is, this is very serious and traumatic. So in the footage, you could see one of the girls using a stick to try and open the bag and, The police have confirmed that they do not believe that this video was staged in any way. They don't believe that the girls had anything to do with this. They honestly believe it's as innocent and as simple as them recording a video, stumbling upon this and then finding human remains. Um, 
it's like they stumbled upon and entered the world of a massive murder investigation. <sighs> so, um, Th they did decide to post this video um, and the following morning, and it shows them, you know, stumbling across the suitcase along the rocky shoreline, kind of giggling and laughing because they're kids and they're on an adventure. And um, the girls actually captioned the video. And this is what they wrote. Something traumatic happened that changed my life. Mm. Well, absolutely. I mean, I don't you know, no one expects to come across a dead body. So the video was posted on a Saturday morning along with the hashtags crime, murder, and Washington. And they also posted, we found this black suitcase. We were joking that maybe the suitcase would have money in it, right? It's just like this innocent way of like, oh, I wonder what's in the suitcase, right? Let's open it up. Maybe we'll find a treasure. Um, they talked about how the smell was overwhelming. They posted that. And it uh, apparently as the girl is trying to open the suitcase, then she, you could see that now anxiety is rising and now she's getting kind of scared. And that's when they, you know, realized that they had something horrendous that had just happened here. Now what's also um, curious here, Judy, is that how the girls ended up in that location again, back to the innocence and, and the fun and the, and the joy and the adventure of all of this, they used a nap called Rando Nautica, and it just kind of randomly sets your course for an adventure. That's the whole point of the app. You don't know where it's going to take you. So the app is marketed as the world's first quantitatively generated choose your own adventure reality game. OK, so that's what it is. It's an, an adventure reality game. That's what they were playing when they were making their TikTok video. And this is how it ends. Wow. And, you know, I have seen a lot of media attention around Randonautica because people are looking for ways to spice up their pandemic life. And it's this idea of, oh, let's go on an adventure. And the app actually encourages users to set a personal intention before visiting a location. So it kind of sounds like basically you can say, oh, I'm looking for self-discovery or I'm looking for something that maybe could represent paranormal activity. And then sometimes they're then led to places that might have certain synchronicities. And I think these individuals probably were thinking, okay, let's go on an expedition. And like you said, this very innocent, this is going to be fun. Maybe we'll find a hidden treasure. And instead they find this. And it, it does kind of bring to light though, you know, how many people are going to be using Randonautica after this incident? I think that's a little too scary. And I certainly will not be partaking in this particular choose your own adventure. But there's no way or any evidence that Randonautica or, 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 or they had any idea that this is where they were going to end up. I mean, that's part of the adventure of life. You don't know where you're going to end up and what you're going to find. Of course, nobody expects to find, you know, a murder scene. That is just so weird, though, that this random generator sent them to these coordinates. You know, I mean, obviously it sounds like it is a coincidence. There's no way that Randonautica is involved, but that's just odd that they were sent there and that that's how they discovered this. I mean, who knows without these two teenage girls playing on this app, if they weren't doing that, if these bodies would have not ever been found, or maybe it may have taken more months before we even realized that they've been missing and that this is sort of an unsolved mystery. And I don't know what help, if any, this is for the police, but the fact that it was um, videotaped, you know, that the evidence was as they were approaching it was being preserved, if you will, um, by the by the video. I don't know if that's of any help at all, but nonetheless, it's an interesting investigative tool to have that video. Police have really, again, not said anything about a motive or suspects and the uh, couple's relatives, the victims here, have launched a GoFundMe campaign to raise reward money to see if they can find the killers. And obviously, uh, the families of the two murder victims are absolutely devastated to find out that not only that their loved ones are murdered, but they're part of this bizarre, bigger film noir, if you will. Absolutely. And again, you know, because the police haven't released more information and hopefully we'll start to know more. I really do hope that these families get some answers because, you know, family members have said, for example, that the woman who died, she was a ray of sunshine. She worked as a caregiver for developmentally disabled people. And so they're clearly reflecting on all of these positive characteristics and qualities of the deceased and they want answers. And they deserve them. They absolutely do.